The Apostles, once set to serve destined death, are wielders of the god-slaying Black Flame, but after their defeat by Malekith, the Black Blade, the source of their power was sealed away. With this challenge run we will get that power back, by beating the game with just Godslayer incantations, so we can fulfill the destiny of the Glomite Queen. There is only one problem here, how do we actually get a damaging spell at the beginning of the game? All of the Godslayer incantations are locked behind tough bosses, meaning that this run should be impossible, right? Well, these are the kinds of problems that I really like to tackle, and there is something we can do about it, so let's get started, shall we? First, let's set up the rules for the run. I can only deal damage to enemies with Godslayer spells, I can only use Godslayer incantations, no other sorceries or incantations are allowed, any other non-damaging gear is allowed. Before we get to the fun stuff, we need to take care of some prerequisites. We start off as a prophet, of course, he has the best stats required for a faith best caster in the beginning. We go through the beginning of the game as always, we jump off a cliff, get sniffed by a horse and wake up in a cave open a huge stone door with our immense shoulder strength and go out in the world. We waddle our way to the Church of Ellen and continue to the gate front site of Grace to talk to our waifu Melina and collect our steed Torrent. Now we have a couple of options before us, but to actually acquire a useful spell we need to get our ass to the Altos Plateau. To do that we first have to collect the two halves of the Dectus Medallion from Fort Hive and Fort Faroff. So we go and do that. That's the first one, easy. Second one and we are done. Now we continue to Lyurnia by skipping Stormvale for now. Do some cheeky speedrun jumps for some style points. Oh! I made it! Perfect! Wonderful speedrun skip. And boom, we are in Lyurnia, boys. We will do more things in this area later on, but for now we just need to traverse this place. On our way we pick up the two finger talisman as we will need it for the incantations we want to get. We make use of the teleporters around the area to make the journey a bit more quicker as well. Then we just need to grab the academy key by the dragon in the lake and use the series of teleporters on the bridge of the academy to access the highway that leads to the Dectus lift. We avoid the trebuchet blockade by jumping up the rocks near the cliff so we don't get shot in the face repeatedly and continue on to the Dectus lift. Finally, we ride the Dectus lift to the beautiful land of pain and suffering aka the Altus Plateau. One more stop and we are almost at our desired destination. We grab a couple of graces on our way and move on to the broken bridge by the forest. On the broken bridge we use the teleporter that gets us to Domingula, the windmill village. The area where we will complete our first main objective. Most of you might realize what I am planning by now. We are going to take down the Godskin Apostle here, but without touching him even once. So here's how this is going to work. First we travel up the village and meet the Godskin Apostle. We take his aggro and slowly lure him over to the small little cliffside with kind of a hole to the side of it. Our goal is to trap the Godskin Apostle here in this hole without him despawning. If done right, he will get glitched into the ground and enter a falling animation. And all falling animations end with the NPCs dying from gravity. This took me around an hour and a half to complete because it's really hard to survive his attacks while trying to get him into that hole. Here is how that went. <gasps> oh sh- Found that something weird happened right there. Oh, this is not going off. Oh, okay. Walk into the hole. God damn it. He's in the hole. He's in the hole. Make him walk towards me. No, no, no. Don't respawn. Oh, uh, this happens sometimes. Ooh. I'm pretty sure we did it. Oh, come on. He actually got out of the fucking hole. I'm, I'm, I'm so mad right now. Come on. <laughs> Oh no, not attack, not attack. Yeah, if, he, if he doesn't attack, I'm pretty much doomed, so... What the hell? <laughs> he killed me in fucking mid-air. Worst attack. Whoa! Yes! We did it, guys! It's over. He is fucking dead. Don't jinx me now. Don't jinx- Yes! Goodbye, Godskin Apostle. But after a while, my chat and I have finally completed the goal. Now, with Scouring Black Flame in our hands, we can finally start this quest to bring death and death to all the gods in the lands between. We start our quest with the first char bearer you usually encounter, Godric the Golden. But to get to him, we need to go through Market first. This is an ideal time to test our new incantation. Considering that I never really used these spells, I wasn't really sure how easy or difficult this run is going to be. And Margit is a great boss to test your build on as he's a literal judge of the worthy. So I went into the boss fight. Oh, that's a lot of damage! <laughs> that is not a small amount of damage, guys. Once I realized that the damage was pretty good, I took down Margit in just 3 tries. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this challenge run might be a cakewalk at the beginning. I immediately went into Stormhill Castle and went through the entire place, rushing through everything because there are a couple of items that we really want right now. 
On the grounds in the castle where the blockade is located, there is a room that's blocked by a fog gate. Using a stone sword key to open the gate, we get access to a very important item. We get the God Slayer Seal and the Godskin Prayer Book. Both of these items are great for us. The God Slayer Seal boosts our God Slayer spells by 15% and the book gives us access to another great incantation, the Black Flame. This incantation is very important as it has great range and does almost the same amount of damage as our previous incantation. Plus, it is also a lot faster to cast, which is the most important aspect of any weapon. Now we are ready for the boss fight. Godric is a real easy one though. He has problems with dealing with enemies at a distance, so my entire game plan was just to sit back and spam the hell out of Black Flame. While the Black Flame was eating at his flesh, I just kept my distance and practiced my roll timings on his attacks. Thanks to the 1.06 patch, staying on a light roll really does help a lot with avoiding enemy attacks, so I took advantage of that. On my first try, I didn't defeat him unfortunately, but I went and tried after that and got him beautifully on my second attempt. That's the first shard bearer down. Now we have a couple of options of who to go after next. Before we go ahead and do that though, I want to do some leveling first as rushing through the bosses usually leaves me with a severe case of underleveling. Since I still haven't gotten good at this game, I need my levels very much. I also collect the upgrade material for the flask off screen as getting them is tedious and isn't really fun to watch in a video, so I'll spare you of that. So we go ahead and talk to the you are maidenless guy, aka Vare. After having a series of stern conversations with him at the church, he gives us the bloody fingers for invading people. We need to do just 3 to progress this questline. I committed to using the Godsplayer spells even in PvP, so I horribly die in my first 2 invasions as you might expect, but the third invasion was one of the weirdest encounters that I ever had in PvP. Basically I invaded near the capital and the host and his summons started to run towards the tree sentinel. And even though I was shooting fireballs at their asses, they didn't seem to notice me as they just engaged the boss without taking care of me first. Here I'm just gonna let you watch the clip. They're gonna die horribly. <laughs> the hell is going on guys? <laughs> so anyway, with this completed, we go back to Vare, get some maiden's blood by murdering a poor innocent woman named Erina in the Weeping Peninsula, come to think of it, it's probably why it's called like that, and then we finally go to Mogwen Palace. Here we perform my favorite glitch in these runs that just saves a bunch of time room farming. I explained it in my previous videos in more detail, but you basically jump up this white tree, then you jump up to this plateau and then just hop down into your demise. This little trick nets me around 80,000 runes each time, making the leveling process a whole lot more smoother. Here I leveled myself to around 80-ish. Next we want to pick up a couple of upgrades from Volcano Manor. The first one of those is going to be the Earth Tree Seal, located just at the entrance of the Church of Kuko. Probably the best seal when you're doing a pure faith slash caster build like I'm doing. It is also upgraded with somber smithing stones, making my life a whole lot more easier. Here we also pick up the plus 5 somber smithing stone, as well as the plus 6 somber smithing stone. The plus 7 we will also get later from this place. Now we head over to our boy EG by using the teleporter near the academy gate. It teleports us very near to him. From him we buy the other smithing stones that we need to upgrade our seal, getting our seal all the way to plus 6 and giving us a huge boost to our damage. Now it is time to take down some demigods. The first boss on my hit list is Renala in the academy. By proxy that means that her husband's dog has to suffer the black flame first. He goes down relatively quickly. He is very hard to hit but we do a lot of damage to him and with the burn effect on these spells he bites the dust very easily. I defeat him on my first attempt. After his death I pick up the Redagon's icon. It is located just above the arena that we have just fought him with. This will boost my casting speed by a bit making my overall DPS increase. Time for the queen herself now. She's always a bit annoying if you're not rocking a melee build. First phase goes down really smoothly as she takes a lot of damage from our spells. Second phase though is a bit tricky. Her enemy model is very skinny making it a bit difficult for my spells to actually land consistently. When they do land though they burn. I just need to find the opening so I can punish her with my setup. Not too much to say about the fight. Attack, dodge, attack, dodge, dead. What do you expect? I am literally using spells designed to kill the gods themselves. Reichardt would have been proud of me. Though I'm not sure of that cause I'm literally trying to murder his mother. Oh well. Moving on. Since I am in the process of murdering the gods, I thought why not try to kill Radan as well. Before going to him I made a stop at the sleeping dragon in Caleb. Thanks to the burn effect of my incantations I can actually kill this thing now. The burn effect seems to be tied to the max HP of the enemy that it affects. Making bosses that usually have a lot of HP more susceptible to the black flame than to other attacks. That's pretty good. Now honestly Radan was a joke. I didn't even use summons against him, I soloed him here. The black flame has a lot of range allowing me to just ride torrent and hurl firebombs to his face. The burn effect was also eating away at itself very rapidly, making me feel like I've just unlocked game journalist difficulty for Elden Ring. The fight was over so fast I really thought this challenge might be a bit too easy. Don't worry though, there are plenty of difficult bosses later on ready to beat my ass into the dirt. I still wasn't satisfied with my current level of power, I wanted more, I needed it. 
so the obvious path forward then was through the Godskin Noble. He's always going to be a tricky fight as the area you fight him in invokes claustrophobia in me, but fortunately because of the previous challenge runs I have pretty much figured out this fight when using a spellcaster setup. Though the fight was a bit funny though because at some point we were literally just exchanging black fireballs at each other. Gotta say, it feels really good giving the Godskin fuckers a taste of their own medicine by exploding their input in meaningless ways. With the Godskin down I have access to the rest of the upgrade materials needed to upgrade my seal. Now with the seal upgraded to the maximum we are pretty much ready for the endgame. The last thing I did was to burn down the putrid avatar in Caleb to get the flame shrouding cracked here for my physics flasks. It buffs my fire damage so it's obvious that we are gonna get it eventually. Well, it's about time we headed for the capital I would say. Standing in my way is of course the draconic tree sentinel. Thankfully this time I was going to clobber his ass for a change. After he was dealt with, I just couldn't accept the fact that the capital skip was patched as of 1.06. Rest in peace. Well, the capital fortunately isn't all too big if you just run straight through everything. So we do exactly that, moving on to Godfrey. And as you can expect, there was no challenge here as well. This is usually the point where these runs become easy cause I can max out the damage potential of my build before the capital, thus the capital doesn't provide any actual challenge. That's probably why the last third of the game has a huge difficulty spike, to balance out that scenario, but I'm just guessing here. Anyway, with Godfrey down, Morgoth is up next. Thankfully he's a bit more tricky here. His fast movements make for a particularly interesting fight, but I am buffed to the gills at this point so I didn't took too much to figure him out. Basically just abuse his attacks where he stands still and transitions to phase 2 to dish out a bunch of damage. You want to avoid spending a lot of time in his second phase cause he goes gymnastics on your ass. He becomes super fast and aggressive and is very hard to hit with spells. But if you do everything right he will go down, basically just get good. I got him on my second try. Now we have a family talk with Melina, she gives us the rolled medallion for the next part of our journey. The mountaintops of the giants. So moving on through the mountaintops we pretty much just skip everything in the area, cause we already have everything that we need. While riding my horse to the winter wonderland, this would be a good time to mention if you like my cotton, subscribe and follow me on Twitch. We move straight towards the fire giant, as he is the only obstacle left in the area. I thought maybe cause of his high resistance to fire he might pose a significant difficulty. And don't get me wrong, he is no easy task for sure, my main fear is running out of flask before I manage to land the killing blow on him. But for some reason once I started to fight him in this run I did pretty much everything right, almost never getting hit. Sure, it helped a lot that the black flame was eating away at his health like crazy. Guess his huge 40,000 health bar came to bite him in the ass at this time. Still, being careful is vital here especially for his second phase as he can just one shot you out of the blue. I guess I just got good here because I beat him on my first try, first time that ever happened, didn't expect that at all. Well. Time to burn the earth tree, I guess. Burn for the sake of the new lord. The one who walks alongside flame. Shall one day meet the road of destined death. Before we continue on our main path, we will pick up a couple of final upgrades. First we make a stop at Fort Light to grab the Scorpion Talisman. It boosts our fire damage by 12% giving me even more power. Next we run to the Spirit Caller Cave and here we encounter the wannabe Godskin duo, but not really. This fight is a bit weird as you need to beat the Godskin duo separately to finish the fight. An uneventful fight all in all, I just spam the Black Flame and keep my distance for the entirety of the fight. After they go down we get rewarded with our final incantation. The Black Flame Ritual. I thought it might come in handy later on so I wanted to pick it up. Now we return to our main path. The next upcoming boss fight are the guys that I'm trying to surpass, the Godskin duo. Oof, they are nerve wracking to fight as always. I need to keep my distance from both of them and just focus down the fatso in order to remain on top. I must not under any circumstance get the skinny dude into phase 2, he gets way too aggressive and makes the fight 10 times harder. So the strategy is to hide behind pillars, keep my distance from them and throw fireballs while focusing down the fat dude. Funnily, at one point the three of us were just spamming the same spell at each other. Eat the black flame you. Monsters. Will you stop? <laughs> Leave me alone! Honestly, this fight is so boring, I can't even explain it to you guys. Because you just do this the entire fight. Oh, I staggered him! What the hell? What the. Did you see that, guys? Am I witnessing glitches today all the time, or what the hell is even going on? But it seems that their kryptonite are the same spells that they themselves use, so they amazingly go down on the second try. GG! Oh my god. We are on a roll, guys. Woo! Malekith is the last in the line. 
and getting healed by him repeatedly is just a normal thing at this point in the game. But honestly, all of those deaths are mostly the result of my carelessness. If you dodge his attacks right, mostly dodging into and not away from his attacks, the fight will go smoothly. I use the pillars in the room to slow him down a bit and be able to hit him with my fire attacks. I tried using the black flame ritual when fully charged cause he can clip through the pillar, but in the end I just resorted to throwing fireballs to his face. And that worked out wonderfully. Got him under 10 tries, which is a novelty for these runs. Killing Malekith though is monumental. As in the lore, the Godslayer spells were nerfed by removing destined death from them. But now it is finally in my possession and we can use their true power to set the world aflame. Let's finish this, shall we? Well, after all of that fiasco, what do you say about saying hello to our good friend Gideon? What he wants. Well, it seems to me that he's not gonna put up resistance. Can I have a presence in mode? No, 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 no. Black Flame forever. Okay. Well, that was weird, he seemed to enjoy it though. Got three time. His first phase I can deal with no problem. It's always the second phase that throws me for a loop. That's probably cause he can literally one shot me without a care in the world. Besides that, the fight really isn't difficult this time. I had previous videos where I would get stuck on him for a solid 3 hours and over 50 attempts. I guess it's just natural with all of that practice under my belt that it's going to start to become easy. The second phase is just a matter of luck, cause if he gives me the right attacks that can be easily punished I can dish out a ton of damage. Then it's usually just a matter of running away from him and trying to get an attack in here and there. This time it only took me 4 attempts to beat him. The time for a no hit run is steadily approaching. Before I conclude this run I would like to try the setup on some other bosses. Placidusax came to mind first. I really haven't fought him all that much so he gave me a bit of trouble at first. He hit me with a lot of lightning attacks cause I was a bit too greedy when fighting him and I completely forgot how to dodge some of his attacks which was somewhat of a drag. I was surprised as well of how low my damage is against him. Maybe cause he's a dragon? Considering that I'm doing fire attacks? Just maybe. But man is he a cool fight. When he starts charging up the red lightning spear that he sticks into the ground and then it implodes with the power of 10 gigatons of TNT, one of the best gaming moments in my life for sure. It took me a total of 4 attempts to get him down. He really isn't all too tough of a boss fight, so that was to be expected. He's a spectacle though. Mo is up next, and I'm gonna be honest, he's only hard when you don't know what his second phase is. If you bring the tier that negates his damage dealt and keep a mid to long range distance from him, he can be dealt with by just spamming black flame at him. No problem at all. He really doesn't have a good way of dealing with enemies at the distance I gathered. He is super deadly from up close though, so keep that in mind when fighting him. Took him down on my second try. Well, time to try Rykard. And no, we are not gonna use the Serpent Hunter on him. I decided that I want to try to fight him because of the Black Flame effect. It just might be possible without using the weapon that's meant to kill him. Here is how that went. I can't see. <laughs> ah. That means I stopped the Rancor. Oh, I did not. I did not stop the Rancor. Get the fuck away from here. Rikard, it's time to stop. Oh, lava attacks, Jesus Christ. What? That has that range? Rikard, be nice to me. I really, really like you, Rikard. Jesus Christ. Together. God damn it. Ah! <laughs> I'm dodging this completely wrong. Like, my timing is off. Well, if I wasn't utter trash at this game, it would have been possible. The fight just takes so damn long to complete. He has around 80,000 health combined. That's a lot of black flame hits even with a burn effect. I really tried. I tried for a solid hour, but I just couldn't be bothered with him anymore. I knew that I had an extremely annoying fight ahead of me, so I didn't want to burn myself out here. I'll leave this fight to those good at Dark Souls people that I heard so much about. With all of that out of the way, it was time for the main event. The final boss play. And... Get the fuck. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not even frustrated with Elden Beast. It's Radagon that really irritates me with this goddamn spell parry bullshit. I mean, just look at this. Oh no, come on, Radagon. We can now do it. Probably not. Radagon, you're a fucking ass. Do you know that? We can get off two attacks. Hopefully. It was a fluke, we can only get off one attack. One one is for certain, but the second one is not. Let's try it. 
Yeah, he's always going to parry. There's absolutely no way to overcome that. You have to wait for him to attack first. Maybe now. Not enough time. It's just not enough time. Why would they give this ability to any boss? It just makes the fight really frustrating and drawn out. He just isn't fun to fight when you're doing a pure spellcaster. The fight with him revolves around luck of trying to pray to God that Radagon will give you attacks that you can punish. Most of the time he just spams attack without taking a break though. And after him we also have to deal with a real RNG hell that is Elden Beast. At least when I go into that fight I can set up the Black Flame ritual on his face and blast Zas from behind with Black Flame to deal a really big amount of damage. The burn effect definitely does melt Elden Beast though, which is a really nice change of pace. It's pretty simple to explain. If Elden Beast gives me mostly melee attacks, you are gonna have a good time. If he doesn't, well you already know how this goes. Took me around 10 tries to finally get the necessary luck in order to beat them both. God, I hate this boss. Anyway, with those two down, it is time to ascend the Elden Throne as the Elden Lord. The Glowmite Queen would have been proud of me. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.